Welcome to the Land Your Bet Sports Betting Podcast. It's Saturday. We've got five games and kind of a minefield, honestly. A little bit of a dodgy slate here with these weird five games. We've got more than half the teams that are playing today on a back-to-back, which is absolutely absurd. Schedule makers doing what they can, I suppose, with the NFL playoffs, even though we don't even have NFL playoffs this Saturday now. But we do have five games. I'll get into the three picks that I have. There's some wonky stuff with all these back-to-backs in terms of the injury reports, so I can only really get this stuff out to you in time by making sure I get out uh, three picks for you. So I I'll get to those in one sec. Yesterday, a quick look at how we went four and four. It's all about the units here, plus 0.3 units. It's a win. You take money that you make. If you're doing this every single day to make money for yourself, like I am, then you really need to make sure that you're staying positive uh, and it's a long-term game. If you're staying positive, then you have less to make up as you continue to try to win more, right? So the four and four record is what it is. It's the uh, 0.3 units that we care about. I should mention Nods Reed didn't have a 15 plus points prop on any of the books that I use. So I wasn't able to get anything in for him on that one, which worked out because he only got 14 in what was an absolute uh, massacre there against Portland as we thought it might be for the Minnesota Timberwolves. But either way, he got the 10 and a half, as you can see in all those positive, nice bets, including the plus money for Jokic at plus 123, which is really what helped us make sure we got plus money on these bets here. So we stride along as I am now continuing to stave off the sides and totals. I'm not on them at all. Like a junkie, I kept going back to them. And I made a pact on Thursday to you guys that I was not going to be playing sides and totals for at least a week. I should probably make that like 30 days. Because as you can see with these play props, 22.6 units up. 121 and 90 on the season, 13.3 units, which would be, like I said, even way sexier if we could just stay away like the crackheads that we've been with these sides and totals. So we press on with the first bet that I have here for Saturday, and it's an under for everybody's favorite MVP right now. At least he's a top two candidate in SGA, but we are going under 12 and a half rebounds and assists, which we've done with him before. And our three and oh, by the way, on the under is when we don't touch his points. Minus 115 DraftKings, one unit. And I, I'm this is a game where he's going to be playing Orlando. This is what they do. We've talked about it before when you get a point guard that's coming in against Orlando. You feel a good scoring point guard that's athletic, can get to all the way to the rim, and can just pull up from mid-range. And let's be honest, he also has the three-point shot going more than he ever has this season. Um, but more importantly, he can just get whatever he wants on the floor. Shy is one of those dudes who sort of transcends uh, these numbers that I'm throwing at you, but they're helpful. Um, so either way, the rebounds and assists are not as transcendable, right? The the points are what he can just get whenever he wants. Rebounds and assists are a little bit more dependent on game flow, etc. So the way that Orlando plays is they limit point guards to the seventh fewest rebounds, the third fewest assists, and they allow uh, a bottom 10 amount of points, two point guards per game. They're just not as good at stopping them from scoring, but they're good at stopping them from do everything else because they have very good long rangey defenders that play very good help defense, right? Now, like I said, Shai is going to transcend the points wherever he is, whenever he plays against whomever he plays because he's that level of score like your lucas and your stephs and etc right kd lebron whatever there's blowout possibilities in this one though and i don't know that you're going to get the minutes from him as we saw obviously he played 21 against portland not going to be that level of blowout but there is the opportunity for this game to be a little bit more uh there's an opportunity for for role players to get a lot more time let's put it that way shy and chet are definitely getting uh, and jay will uh, jay dub excuse me are getting a ton of time but when you, you look at games where Shy goes over, it's when they're playing closer and he needs to, to do more, right? Including get boards and even dime up because he's got the ball in his hands even more. The ball doesn't need to be in his hands to assist as much if they're not playing a game that he cares about. He's going to score when he needs to to make sure they get a double-digit lead, and then they're going to move on. And they're playing at home. When they have a rest advantage, I should mention, they are blowing teams out by at least 11 points per game. That's their margin of victory in their uh, games where they have eight games where they have a distinct rest advantage over their opponents. We know Orlando's coming in on a back to back just played a really tough game uh against miami that they couldn't pull out uh we got very lucky on our paolo under well not really lucky as long as he misses threes we were good but he had 25 points we had him under 27 and a half either way we press on here with the under for shy under 12 and a half rebounds and assists might get the points might not get any of it if this game isn't close so in that same game though we've got moritz wagner and we are taking him uh this is upside down oh i missed one here for you it should be a over 10 and a half points for moritz that's one unit and then 15 plus points is a ladder that we're playing him for 0.3 units and we're also taking a third bet for him which is over 14 and a half points and rebounds 0.7 units my apologies there but this is going to be a two unit bet on mo wagner because we're riding with mo tonight baby uh so 10 and a half points one unit is not on there hopefully you're listening to the video you're not just one of those people that's just scrubbing through Ooh, I just remembered to tell you to like and subscribe to the page. So please do that. Continue to follow 
follow along. We are rising in the total amount of subscribers we've got, and I really, really appreciate it. Helps me do what I do for you guys, free picks each and every day. So let's keep going with it. Mo Wagner here, over and four straight without brother Franz. And for those of you who called me out that the Bogdanoviches are not brothers, totally not my bad. Um, but Moritz and Franz can confirm our brothers and both from Germany in the same country, unlike Bogdan and Boyan, who aren't even from the same country, much less brothers. So we press on here, 18 and a half points and eight boards in 31 minutes a game without his brother in the last four days. And just as important, it's, it's actually more important than the fact that Franz has been missing from this magic lineup is the fact that Wendell Carter Jr. has been missing from this magic lineup. Goga Batadze has been getting plenty of starts. That's why he's got props and Mo doesn't even have props right now, which I hope is clear. Like I don't have these numbers for you. These are projections and what I would play over and how I would play Moritz's props today. I'll be checking back in on social media. So follow along there at JL Boogie and the comments of this video, because I am going to be continuing to like keep track of all these weird in and out players because of lineups. We don't have props for Mo because the books are cowards more than anything, because we know that he's been getting more minutes than Goga Batadze. Like, Goga can start all he wants, the way Kendrick Perkins used to start on the Celtics. Doesn't mean he's getting more than 19 minutes in a game, right? Like we saw against the Heat last night. Goga's older. You've got a much more uh, versatile and young, younger and spry uh, Moritz Wagner than you have for Goga Batadze. He's a better matchup for Chet Holmgren than Goga is because Chet can play all over the floor and so can Moritz, right? So you need him out there for that much more versatile center. So yeah, we're going to get a ton of minutes from him tonight. So the books are cowards for not giving us Mo Wagner props because maybe they just don't know how to cap him, but I do. And it's that he's averaging 18 and a half and eight in 31 minutes, like a starting center should be doing a good scoring starting center who is a pull you out from the basket and shoot threes level of center. Um, Chet's going to be fine. Like Chet will do fine. I don't know that Moritz is a great matchup for him, but down low, he's going to bang with him and get boards because OKC allows a ton of boards to centers, the, the fifth most. They allow a ton of boards in general. They're a bottom five rebounding team overall. So Moritz is just a dude who's going to continue to grind out rebounds as much as he can. Was more of a scorer last night, 19 points. That's why I love the points, but I do like adding the rebounds in there. This might come out at like 12 and a half. It's been around 10 and a half to 12 and a half. And like I, I've, you can see here, because I like the little bit of the, the ladder play, I'm playing this up to like 11 and a half is really where I feel good about it. If you take 12 and a half and you get plus money, I feel it. But if you're taking bad juice at 12 and a half, I'm not as big a fan of it. The other thing is, is if this is a massive nasty blowout, then like even Moe's not going to get that much time because as much as he's a backup center, he's the starting center. He, the minutes wise and, and usage wise, right? He is the starting center. So uh, he might not get that many minutes if this is a blowout, but he'll be in there as long as this is within double digits, uh, within 10 points, I, I mean, or, you know, within 10 to 15 points. If they're within striking distance for the whole game, then he and Paolo are going to play. They're not going to just sit them if there's an actual chance that they can win this game against the Thunder. All right, last pick here. Dario Saric, Saric, excuse me, that's how you do pronounce it, Saric. He does have props up. 13 and a half points is an assist combined is my favorite number for him. Minus 125 on DraftKings. The rebounds are there. Look, he's playing power forward now because the, um, the Warriors are playing a lot more Kavan Looney and Dario Saric together. TJD's coming in at power forward. He's never been a center. So whenever he was listed at center, it was dumb. Uh, but more importantly, Dario and Kevon Looney are, but one, they're both in together because they're both honestly like kind of power forward way more than their century. Uh, and so Dario's getting in at the power forward spot, Kevon more traditional down low center. That's because Dario Sarge is an incredible passer. Uh, he's got the third most potential assists on this team in the last three games um, because of the fact that he is such a good passer. And in the last two, uh, I'm sorry, in the last three, he's like the fifth most, but in the last uh, three games, Chris Paul has been out and now he is the backup point guard, honestly. Like he's coming in uh, either starting or playing second unit minutes getting uh, about above 20 minutes per game in the last five. And there's a blowout. There's a couple blowouts in there. He even played in the blowout against Toronto, but he, he also played a, a little bit fewer minutes in that blowout versus the Pelicans, where nobody who mattered in that game played because it was over by the first quarter. Uh, but when they've been in games like last night, where they actually end up coming back and beating the Bulls, Dario Saric uh, was in there for 28 minutes. And now you're going to see a lot bigger lineups because their rebounding has gone down without he, him and Kevon on the floor at the same time. And without him on the floor in the last five games, 
he's like the, the, the best on off uh, rebounder on the team, including Jonathan Kaminga, which the only thing that annoys me and scares me a little bit is that he and Kaminga have been a little bit more interchangeable. And then Looney and TJD, the rookie Trace Jackson Davis, they've been a little bit more interchangeable, but the 25 to 20 to 30 minutes should be there for him because it's just he and, K and JK in this one. Kaminga is a good, going to keep getting minutes. He was their best player last night, scored a ton of points, was crucial to their winning. And in, in, in the second half was incredible. Also kept them in it in the first half, to be honest, because Steph didn't score very much. But more importantly, like they still need Dario's rebounding. They need JK's rebounding. They're both interchangeable. That means you have four big men that you're rotating between all four of those guys I just mentioned. That means there's at least 25 minutes in here. And if he's going to be as good of a passer as he's been, where he opens things up the way he has, you got to keep him in there. You've seen him get big minutes in big games versus big teams in good, good big teams, right? Big games means good teams. Big teams means teams like the Bucks, where you've got a starting lineup that has two seven footers and Bobby Portis comes in and you're tall at most positions other than point guard and shooting guard. So I mean, even Malik Beasley isn't too small, but yeah, I, I love the, uh, the charge man here as I think we're continuing to get value on his props, especially without a backup point guard in and especially without Draymond green still in the lineup. So quick summary of how we're playing today. We've got a total of two units on Mo Wagner. As you can see there, glad I got the best bet summary. Correct. So this is official. You can see that uh, we've got two units on him. We've got a unit on shy and we've got a unit on Dario. So we've got four units that we're playing on this really weird. Like I said, I don't feel the need to just start dropping units on this slate today because it's just a weird one. And I don't want to deal with some of the, the, the land mines that we're going to have to try to dodge. Right. So uh, take shy under 12 and a half uh, rebounds and assists. Mo, we've got 10 and a half points, 15 plus points. If you can get it over 14 and a half points in rebounds these numbers might be a tick higher i'm not sure the books don't seem to know how to play him so they're waiting out to put his stuff out but that's where i'm at with him and how i would play him here 11 and a half points is kind of like where i'm at in terms of not getting plus money for him to score that many so go with that for mo dario over 13 and a half points and assists because he's such a freaking good passer i love i really love dario Saric's game so i'm, I'm continuing to, to play his stuff right and that is all the time that i have for you guys in this one i got a jet Good luck today with all these bets. Best of luck to everybody. Please do continue to follow along and subscribe to the page. I know my boy, Burr Oaks, is already at least 2-0 and on the day with those college basketball bets. So hopefully you can check those out on the channel. He's got his own playlist and everything because his show is a little bit different, but it's awesome. We are going to be coming back to you as soon as we can. I'm debating on a Sunday slate video. We got so much football. I might just be looking at that stuff. So stick around, stay tuned. And until I see you next, happy betting.